Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks very much. I'm absolutely delighted to be here today, and I've learned so much already from this morning's sessions. So this is where it all began. This is a beautiful sunrise sea swim outside Kinsale around the island of Sandy Cove. And this is where myself and my business partner, Dr. Shara, Tara Shine, met. We're both sea swimmers. Um, one day after a glorious swim around Sandy Cove Island, I approached her on the slip with a very simple but very important question. Why is there no green team for me? You see, my eldest is on the green team at school and he's learning really cool things about recycling and renewable energy and sustainability. Um, and the first I heard about it was when I received an email asking me to attend an award ceremony and he'd been on the team about two years at that point. Uh, I don't know whether that's a reflection of my parenting skills or his <laughs> communication <laughs> skills. Um, but the point is there was absolutely no shared learning and we hadn't changed any our, of our behaviours at home. So you see about 50% of kids will use their pester power but in my case he was part of the 50% that wasn't. Um, and I'm the decision maker in our house, not my 11 year old. Um, I buy and cook all the food. I'm in charge of all the utilities. I desperately wanted to know what the right thing to do was and had absolutely no idea where to start. Any information that I found online was quite, you know, it was impenetrable. It was frankly like really boring. Um, uh, there's also a deluge of doom media around the environment that we're all acutely aware of now and I think that's really desensitised people and it's damaged the environmental message. I knew that myself and Tara could do way better than that. So Tara is um, a Doctor of Environmental Science and she's worked for eight years on the Mary Robinson Foundation um, and I have wrote and researched and taught at UCD in the National Museum of Ireland. Um, I knew how to gather and give facts could I make them relatable and understandable and possibly even enjoyable? I thought, yeah, okay, let's give this a go. So myself and Tara put our heads together and decided to have a focus group for about 25 women on Women's Little Christmas in Kinsale in my house. Um, just to brainstorm things on sustainability pertinent to Kinsale town, like water quality, traffic, dog poo, litter. These are the things that matter to the people who live in Kinsale. Within 10 minutes of getting these women in the door, the very first thing they said to us is, do not dare give us one more problem to solve. Don't, don't tell us that the planet is in serious trouble and that women are the only ones who can fix it. So straight off, we knew that in agreement with them, this was a problem that required all hands on deck. Uh, one thing that got them really animated was the wine and the plastic. We did an icebreaker on sorting out our own rubbish and literally that could have gone on all night long. So myself and Tara instantly knew that we had an in. Plastic was manageable and plastic is something we could take action on. So um, we created Plastic Free Kinsale. It's a voluntary community initiative, initiative, the aim of which is to reduce single-use plastics and up awareness on recycling rates. We were determined to work through the community and not give already time-poor people another committee to attend. We identified four groups, businesses, clubs, schools and homeowners, and we created three simple actions that we asked them to take on reducing their use of single-use plastics. And it's been a great success. But that's not just down to us. I mean, Plastic Free Kinsale is only one tiny component of why it works. Um, Kinsale is literally the town that keeps on giving. It's got an amazing Tidy Towns community group and it was the birthplace of Transition Town. Plus it has a really active group of individuals that live there. Um, we're in the process of trying to set up a co-op right now. We've got a massive project called the Future of Kinsale and Train. We've surveyed 800 tourists and the community that live there. So Kinsale is primed to take action. And most importantly, with Plastic Free Kinsale, we want it to be replicated and improved upon. You know, the point is that people will use it and learn from it and make it even better. We're not the first plastic free town in Ireland and we're so hope, we hope we're not the last. So let's talk about these groups that I identified. First thing we did was that we visited every single school in Kinsale and the surrounding areas and we gave them a workshop that we designed to teach the kids what single-use plastics were and the impact that they were having on the environment. And these are an example of the three asks. See the first one there on the left, say no to plastic in lunchboxes. That is way harder than you think. Um, because 
with all the little, you know, micro packs that you can buy and the mini packs and everything, you know, and it's so convenient for time poor mums and dads or childminders or grannies or whoever's making that lunch to just throw a mini into a lunch box. So this was quite a hard ask. The straws, the kids really, really got because we were able to use beautiful poly toys, which are like teddies with plastics inside their bellies. And we could show these to the kids. So off the back of our program um, that we rolled out in our own community, we were approached by ChangeX to design Plastic Free for Schools, which they now host on their website. And this is a free schools um, program that any uh, school in the, in the country can download and follow our tips. We were lucky enough to receive fun uh, funding and we hired this amazing girl called Anne Folds here on the right who then set about creating a project for the entire county of Tipperary and she educated over 4,500 kids in a, in, in a month. Um, and the ripple effect of that is amazing because I'm hoping that some of those kids that she connected with will, will take that information home to their parents and their granny and their childminder and the club that they attend. Um, we're actively seeking further funding so we can roll out this comprehensive project around other counties in the country. Then we, deal, we, uh, we decided to deal with clubs. Um, the clubs thing was motivated by personal um, issues for me. So I've got lots of kids who do lots of sports and I spend lots of times on sidelines. And it drives me absolutely bonkers when I see all those mini waters and mini jelly packs that the coaches, the well-meaning coaches, bring to all these events. So we created this system of actions that we were asking coaches and people who worked in clubs and not just sports like it can be the, the flower club or the historical club it's not just sports clubs that they can take uh, the Kinsale tennis club is a really good example of someone who took this full steam ahead um, last year they were the first tennis club in ireland to hold a green open and they did far more than just get their waste right they also did massive work around food waste because a lot of the restaurants in Kinsale Town support the event by giving them dinners every evening and they handled their food waste really, really well. They organised their composting, they put up solar panels to charge mobile phones, they collected people from the bus stop. This is a, an entire green open that then clubs all around the country wrote them about to get actions on and learn how, they, how it worked. So these are our asks for businesses. I don't know if you can read this well, but we divided businesses between food and beverage and retail. And simple asks, I won't read through them all, but one of them, for example, for the retail section would be, don't offer a bag or a box um, you know, for the per person's purchase. If they want one, you can obviously give one, but explain why you choose not to, because you're part of this plastic free can sale process. And, and these were kindly sponsored by the Blue Haven Collection in Kinsale Town, and you can put these on your countertop so that tourists understand your motivations. And then the most interesting one for me personally is because I do a lot of the social media outreach is the people in, the, in their homes and that's where our audience are most engaged. We connect by our social media channels, our websites and we also hold lots of events. A really good example would be uh, She is Sustainable Cork. The first time that was ever held was a few months ago. We were oversubscribed by 400 people and then we got a room full of 200 in UCC with 13 amazing female speakers on every topic of sustainability from finance to farming. The, the event was open to everyone. So I wanted the, the engineering lecturer in UCC to come, but I also wanted the stay at home mom uh, with three kids who just is sick of plastic to show up to. And I think we created a really, really great event. Uh, we have a relationship with our followers. All this messaging is a lot of work. Um, that will be my only, you know, if I'm going to tell a brutal truth. You know, it takes a lot to keep this kind of engagement up and running. Um, so how do we engage? We meet people where they're at. For whatever reason, these are just people, and this is the Green Club, and this is an Oroctus Report um, kind of debrief that myself and Tara did, and it's up online on our YouTube channel, and that's an example of the She is Sustainable Cork that we did. For whatever reason, myself and Tara make real life understandable. We've created understandable bits of information. For example, we came home one day after Pilates and we went to Tara's house and we said, look, let's just make a video on the waste associated with spaghetti bolognese and that dinner. <laughs> and we gave her our phone to her kid and 250,000 views later, we knew we were onto something. Um, we've since had the sense to hire a production company and uh, get out of the gym gear and brush our hair and we make about one minute videos on exactly that kind of thing. So we have videos on the waste associated with drinks, you know, Friday night drink, we've the waste associated with uh, pizza 
and that can be the homemade right up to the takeaway. We've got, um, and not just waste, we do lots on office and vampire energy, you know, it, there's a cross section of stuff. The point is they're a minute long and they're totally accessible. Um, we've started a conversation that extends way outside plastic. So when I show up to the GAA pitch, I overhear people talking about, look, I might walk the kids to school now and stop driving them. Or I overheard my friend saying, I'm going into John's house tonight because he's downloaded a pile of YouTube videos on how to build a wormery. Like these are conversations these people never had before. It turns out that plastic is actually a really good gateway issue to larger sustainability topics. And we give people actionable, solution-based information that goes a long way to creating that change. And this is a really interesting one for me and Tara. So the nerd in me wants to tell you everything that I know about carbon capture and storage, or the, I don't know, like the non-reporting, non-financial directive report that people should really know about. But you know, I understand that you really also want to know about what to do with the black meat tray, or you want to know why the hell you can't get your hands on a brown bin. Um, we did a great post, or what I thought was a great post, on the importance of peat bogs, and it did really, really well. And then Tara took a photo of a Brita filter and found out the address that you could post that to to recycle it. That got 18,000 views. Mm. So that's the kind of stuff people need to know about. Um, we operate on the premise that perfect is a bully. Myself and Tara do not lead zero waste lives, and our, our messaging is completely authentic and specific to our values and our personalities. Um, I am acutely aware of the double burden that women have from working at home and working in their jobs, but I would like to suggest that they have far more power than they realise, being responsible for very much of the decision making in their homes. And that's something that the government and local authorities would do well to tap into. So we're ticking along with Plastic Free Can Sale, and it's going really nicely. We're constantly being asked to the table by community groups, by semi-states, by businesses and individuals, and even Prince Charles. It turns out that they really want to know what we think. We decided that we were going to create a business to actually meet this volume of demand, and that's called Change by Degrees. Our promise is to change the conversation on sustainability in Ireland, and we pull on our skill sets to offer selection of services to companies so they can build brand awareness, increase profits, meet regulations, but most importantly, just do right by their staff and their customers and their communities. This means giving inspiring and promotional behavioural change information and co-creating new cultures in Irish businesses. This is about inspiring people, not necessarily nudging and certainly not enforcing them to do the right thing. And we won an award. We won the SEI um, Social Entrepreneurs of Ireland Award, which is great too. Um, Plastic Free Can Sale is not owned by myself or Tara it is of the entire community. Right now we are currently planning events because our research has shown that even in these digital times, people want face-to-face -face interactions. People need people. And that's why I was so keen to like meet people here today and share ideas and learn from each other. We believe that there's a huge potential for all the plastic-free towns, the zero-waste towns, the sustainable town groups, everyone to learn from one another and create systemic change that is required to get us to a zero-carbon future. We don't know how to work any other way but collaboratively. We welcome anyone to copy our ideas. We really want to work together and we really want to connect. So we've got about 10 years to figure out this mess. My four-year-old, while really cute, I guarantee he's going to be no addition to this conversation in 10 years' time. I'm really hoping that my six-year-old will be completely preoccupied with passing his junior cert and not the rising sea levels. I want my 11 and nine-year-old to be busy going about their college lives studying for jobs that haven't even been invented yet. I care passionately, passionately about not overburdening my children with this problem and I will consider it an epic failure on our part if we leave it to them to solve. Thank you. Oh.